And here we go once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, he is a mixed martial artist standing six feet even. Weighing in officially 185 and three quarter pounds, he brings 11 victories, three defeats, two draws, and one no contest. Fighting out of Paris, France, here is Norman Parisi. And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in officially 181 pounds. His professional record in 22 bouts, 12 victories, 10 defeats with one no contest. Fighting out of Liverpool, England by way of Blackpool, England. Here is Leroy Barnes. <laughs> Referee in charge, Rich Mitchell. So Rich Mitchell has the pleasure of officiating this one in the middleweight division. We have Leroy Barnes in the white, Norman Parisi in the black, scheduled for three fives. Big first test for Barnes. Yeah, watch for Leroy Barnes to put big hands on Parisi as quickly as possible. We haven't seen too many people on Cage Warriors come forward and throw in a massive amount of volume early at Parisi. He's always been allowed to settle into these fights. Well, Barnes is indeed putting him on his back foot. Teeing off on that chin. He got caught coming in, though. As I mentioned in his walkout, been training down at Next Generation with the likes of Danny Roberts, who is very, very quick indeed. Really good parrying from, uh, from Leroy Barnes, just catching and redirecting the incoming strikes of Parisi. A real character, Leroy Barnes. A lot of people following his career closely. Use that hashtag, CWFC57. We know that Leroy would want you to. <laughs> yeah, very vocal on the social media is uh, Leroy Barnes. But take nothing away from him as well. A lot of people speak about that, but he's a talented mixed martial artist. Starting out the Wolf's Lair, which was the top gym at the time. He, he actually won that scholarship as well. Had to try out for it. And it's only recently that he thinks that things have been coming together for him. He's tried at different weights and the weight cuts, etc. I mean, believes he's there now. Very, very confident coming into this one. At the moment, he's taking the center of the cage and, you know, he's putting some good strikes together and forcing Parisi to, to cover a bit, but nothing really finding the mark with too much significance yet. Well, you say that, but I think he's caught Perez in the eyes. Having a little few problems with that right eye, keeps sort of wiping at it. Not be too bad, but these small gloves, when they hit home, Perez, they do hurt. Yeah, Perez having some very good success with some kicks, but really good change of level there. Just waited for Barnes to surge forward and went underneath the incoming strikes and you know, good takedown from the Frenchman. Do you think that this could be the kind of strategy Parisi will employ, get this down to the mat. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's obviously got to be very aware of the kind of uh, guillotine submissions that Leroy Barnes can put together. But at the same time, you know, this Ooh, is a good position a big for him right hand to, from Parisi. Yeah, it's a good position for him to grind out on top here. Big elbows now as he postures up, popping that head out, turning the right elbow over. Body, body, head. Yeah, Barnes with full guard now. He's looking to try and pop back to his feet, but doing a very good job is Parisi of getting in on the hips, pulling his man back down to the canvas. But Barnes has got to stay active here. He can't capitulate too early and allow Parisi to settle into this top position. And he's trying to tie up the arms, but Parisi's doing a good job of flopping them out. Risk control now from Leroy as he went to set up a triangle. Yeah. Parisi was cute to it. Barnes has competed in a, a lot of grappling competitions. You know, in his off time, I've actually refereed him back when he was a blue belt several years ago. The moment, Parisi in a dominant position. Barnes looking to find an escape route. He's looking for those overhooks. He is looking for those ties and, and trying to work. Crazy is a, a big man with good posture. He knows exactly what he has to do to stay here and just do enough. Yeah, finding some, getting his hips nice and high to make his 
punch is even more weighty. Yeah, mixing up the tempo very nice from Perezzi. Slow to the body, then really ripping through to the head. No, toes in that fence, Leroy. Letter of the law, he doesn't really want his hands on the mat, but you know, at the same time, Leroy is not doing too much from the bottom here, and he's throwing some short shots and, and really letting Perezzi start to, to pick the work rate up now. Yeah, Perezzi's very good at keeping his arms free. Yeah, you see him pummeling back inside. Yeah, very good hand fighter. Which Again, you know, this kind of collar control from inside someone's guard, you wouldn't ordinarily want to do it. It leaves your arms extended and exposed, but he's clearly very, very aware of what's going to happen. And, you know, Barnes is holding on on the bottom here. The time is running out quickly as we come close to the last 10 in this opening stanza. Yeah, peppering away is the Frenchman. And that signals the end of the round. So I mean, Leroy Barnes runs back to his corner. I mean, look, Barnes started this round, uh, as we'll see here, doing exactly what he wanted to do, coming forward, putting some good combinations together, trying to put hands on. But there was the change of level from Perezzi. So low, so fast. And once he earned that takedown, this is really the story of the rest of the round. So, you know, I think the judges perhaps going to see that Perezzi just doing a bit more there, controlling a bit more of the fight, spending more time on top. I'm just listening into uh, the conversation between Perezzi and Rich Mitchell. There's a little bit of throat squeezing. I did look at that when the, the hand presses on the trachea. You can't do that. And I think that's what um, Rich Mitchell's talking about, as well as some some water issues yeah, as well. I mean, you can use it to hold someone in place. What you can't do is physically squeeze the trachea. There's nothing wrong with a hand on the throat to hold the person towel, towel, in place. Towel, towel, towel. Back yeah, so. as well. Out, 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 out. Referee not impressed with the Parisi corner. Yeah, just buying his man a few more seconds there back, 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 back. in the yeah. corner. I think Parisi, you know, Parisi had a, a point docked in his last fight for grabbing the cage. A few more indiscretions, and he may see the same here. Parisi trying to keep Barnes on the end of those long limbs. Yeah, just trying to keep the range. But again, Barnes has taken the center of the cage exactly where he wants the fight to be. Oh, and a good change of level from Parisi. Uh, but it was a good sprawl from Barnes this yeah, time, though. Stuff from Barnes. Yeah. Nicely done. Hips back and, and away as quick as possible. You want to get your hips as low to the ground so your opponent can't get underneath them. Crowd responding to some of Barnes's attacks. They think that he got clipped there. I think that he actually just lost his balance oh, as he think, came in. I think Barnes thought about the guillotine for a second, but again, he stuffs another clinch position. Good heavy kicks. But Barnes counters nicely. Oh, and Barnes jumps, jumps on, on that the guillotine. guillotine. And you saw... Hasn't got it, but he's yeah. got the mounts. He, Perezzi just managed to escape his chin. Really good work from Perezzi. Looking for the deep half guard now. Fantastic oh. groundwork from Norman Perezzi. Yeah, very good scramble from both of these fighters as Barnes jumps on the guillotine. Oh, he's looking for it again as he got under the chin. You can, oh, uh, just popping it out. Well, Perezzi you know is cut really that, bad on his right eye, I believe. That's the first time we've seen Norman Perezzi put underneath a mount or a, a bad dominant position. And he showed everything you have to do in, in all that jiu is fight. really yeah. bad. Sorry, Josh. Okay. The doctor is being asked in. Yeah, and he, he showed everything you have to do correctly. He got on his hip very, very quick. He was explosive. He didn't give uh, Barnes a chance to settle the position at all. And he went straight to a deep half guard, which is an incredibly technical jiu-jitsu position in which to escape and came up on a single to reverse the position. I'm very impressed with the groundwork of, of Norman Perezzi there. So our uh, KSI doctor is with Norman Perezzi. We'll be assessing the 
Yeah, Perez is smiling. He can see. I think there's going to be no problems. No, even the doctor said it was OK. <laughs> this doctor won't be spoiling the party. Listen to me. You keep your fingers away from his face. Understand? Another warning there from Mr. No Nonsense, Rich Mitchell. What? Time. Stand over there. Stand over there. I just think the Leroy Barnes is trying to use the uh, use the the shirt of the referee to clean his eye. Oh, he's happy. Let's go. He's happy to wow. go. Everyone's is in for this one. I think both They guys. engage again. Leroy really wants to pour it on now. He doesn't like this break in the action. It's allowing Perezzi to recover. Yeah, and I Barnes think with the superior conditioning wants this to run all the way through. I think Barnes is going to take a lot of confidence from those exchanges. He knows he's only got to land a couple more to that area of Perezzi's face to really open oh, him up again. He's him well with a lead left hook. Breaks away, an uppercut coming through. Saw that coming. If he'd have landed that, Perezzi's could have been an early night. the whole time. Well, it could be a bit of gamesmanship, Josh. Oh, good shot by Perezzi stuffing Barnes up against the cage. Let's see if he can come up on this takedown. Yeah, he closed the space down very well, but he's Again, left Barnes his head. He's looking for this guillotine. It's such a good weapon for Barnes that you really, his opponent has to be very cognizant of it during the takedown process. It really does make him think twice. But Perezzi was able to really slow the fight down and land a lot of good short shots in the first round from this position. And Barnes working from the bottom, staying active, trying to keep peppering away at the facial injuries to Perezzi, as Perezzi is again keeping the referee from standing them up by that, that work rate. Looping over now, looking to slip through the middle as well. Fingers away from his eyes. Good communication by our referee here. Really giving the definitive instructions to these fighters to keep it clean. Yeah, let's see if Barnes can get on his hips here and start trying to create some angles. Well, try and put his guard to work here. Perezzi pulls him away from the fence just in case he had any thoughts of walking himself back up. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, Perezzi's getting a chance to rest. He's just looking to smother, make Barnes carry his weight. You see every time he's pummeling back inside very well and landing a few short shots. One ten left in round number two. As Perezzi keeps on wading in with punches, but they have less and less force behind them. All the same, he's in a controlling position and he's spending more time oh, dominant. Then, yeah, Barnes looked as though for a moment he was going to hip out. I mean, you know, there's the there's a lot of potential in the hand positions that Norman Perezzi is using. Watch your head. Watch your head. Time, time, time. Up, 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 up. Well, Rich Mitchell is going to warn Norman Perezzi. Head, head, head. Leroy, are you okay? For, for using his head no, no, stay there, stay in the position there. there. Listen to me, listen to me. There's so many things. Your fingers are all over him. You're holding his throat, your head behind him. That was accidental, so I'm not going to take a point. Anything else happens, I'm going to penalise you. Do you understand? Right. Time in! Right, the fighters reconnect. I think you all heard that. Basically, Perezzi has been fouling accidentally with the head but um, I'm very he's, he's running a very thin line at the moment he's on thin ice a point will be deducted if he continues in that fashion yeah i mean interestingly um you know this fight has been restarted twice on the feet now which is where leroy barnes wants it but this could know. be a turning point josh sorry leroy has just stuffed crazy's takedown attempts and another one he's going to take a lot from that yeah, I mean, certainly he needs to keep his hands the up. The confidence though. is starting to really flow into Leroy Barnes now, but he did spend a lot of time under the top control of Norman Perezzi there. Well, that seemed like quite a long round, and I think if you added and totaled it up with all this, the little breaks. Let's have a look at some of this. Is that guillotine and, and half guard transition from both fighters in the middle of this round was incredible. Yeah, Barnes is starting to stuff these takedown attempts, Josh. And he's every now and then able to get through with some of these strikes. 
Here he goes, he's gonna jump on the guillotine here, use it to flip all the way over to mount, and you can see immediately, Crazy realized he's mounted, hands on the hips, on his on the side, and then we're not gonna to get to see it, but it was a beautiful deep half guard escape to get underneath Barnes and come up on a single leg. I think there's, Barnes is showing a lot of urgency. He's got to be careful not to panic, oh, not I to can overreach. See exactly where Rich yeah, it was a, a very definite, almost accidental headbutt from Norman Parisi there. Stay back, stay back in your corner. Yeah, interestingly, both times this has been restarted for the check of the cut. And, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen, been restarted yeah, the third on and the feet. Which is exactly where Leroy Barnes wants this one. So Barnes energized for this third round. How much has Parisi got left? Typically, he's we've seen him tire of late as we get deeper into the fights. Yeah, I mean, I spoke to Leroy Barnes earlier today and he said, I know if this goes into the third round, Parisi's gonna get tired. And he said, I'm in phenomenal shape. I'm the one who's gonna push forward. I should say tired significantly. Okay. Obviously, the guys are yeah. gonna get tired, Absolutely. especially fighting at this level but more so than one's opponents is what I was perhaps referring to. Good uppercut there from Barnes. As Parisi starts shooting in, that uppercut could become a very valuable weapon. See a big welt on the side of Barnes' left thigh. Hit, and that was a, almost a target as I was speaking. Parisi again closing the distance. Barnes is going to threaten this gear team once more. He's got to be careful though, if he doesn't secure it, which you know he hasn't on this occasion, he does give up that bottom position again. Well, perhaps if he knows he's definitely going to be taken down, that it's worth a shot. Uh, possibly, but you know, at the same time, he, he hasn't really in any of the previous rounds worked to get up from this position. Barnes was sort of paintbrushing Parisi's face. Stay busy, don't grab the gloves. Yeah, it was the indiscretion of Parisi that. Uh, you know, allowed them to, and the cuts, of course, as well, that allowed them to start back on the feet in the second round. The first round, you know, Parisi rode out the entire round in this position. So I think Barnes is going to have to try and get back to his feet here. He can't wait for something to happen because time is going to tick away for him. And Parisi's doing enough, staying busy. He's using his body weight to get behind these punches. They're not crisp, but he's got enough behind them to keep scoring, do damage, and not land himself in a susceptible position to be swept. I mean, look, the guys are going to be very slippery at this point. It's going to be hard to lock up, you know, a, a lot of submissions. Arm bars are going to be very tricky from here. But Leroy Barnes keeps getting some very good control points. He keeps getting that overhook. He keeps getting a bite on, you know, almost on the, the glove and the wrist. But his guard is staying close. He's not looking to get on hip. He's not looking to put feet on the hips and push off, create any kind of angles. He's just throwing short shots from the bottom. And at the moment, he's going to struggle to do any effect with them. Well, Parisi is showing us that he's obviously been working on that conditioning side to his game. There's been a pretty fraught pace to this for these big middleweight fighters. There was a lull in the action, enough for it to be stood up. Let's Barnes see if uh, look to seize this opportunity. Goes yeah. to the body, then to the head. He's trying to put Parisi's big, bobbing and weaving. Trying to put some good combinations together, those good short hooks. Yeah, good one too from Barnes, but he's just a little bit too close. Oh, good a little shot bit over eager. You see allows Parisi the opportunity to take this down. You're seeing, you know, that that's uh, that reaction. Do I get in? Do I get out? And as soon as Parisi is in trouble, he closes the distance very, very fast, gets into the eye of the storm. And Barnes has got no answer for these takedowns at the moment. Earlier on in this round, he put himself in that bad position, you know, and the referee saved him and stood him back up. But once again here, there's only a minute and a half left. He cannot afford to sit in this position. He's got to get back to his feet. Well, we can certainly see why the Cage Warriors matchmakers paired these two fighters together. A very even contest, but the very high international level of experience possessed by Norman Parisi is really helping him through this contest as he keeps scoring his way through as we enter the last minute of round three. This is the final scheduled round. Parisi repeatedly using strikes to the body, strikes to the head. It's a formula that's been working for him. As you've referred to, Josh Leroy once doesn't look like he's trying for submissions, etc. 
Yeah, but if it, there oh, we he, go. He's needed to do that a lot earlier. Well, Parisi jumped all over it, but the sweaty bodies allowed Leroy to now, squirm Barnes, out. Barnes has got to try and get a cross face in. He's got to get an underhook in. He's got to shovel Parisi back up, try and turn him over, do something to create some sort of space here. Well, he goes for that. Arm in guillotine again. It's a bit of a negative maneuver. Yeah, it's desperation at this point, I think. Leroy Barnes, he's just he's running out of ideas here well, he's, on the bottom. He's, he's throwing as many shots from the bottom in his last 10 seconds. He's really trying his very best, but he's up against a stern challenge with Norman Parisi. I mean, Parisi is very physically imposing, and in this kind of position, if you don't spin your hips out very, very quickly, it's going to be hard to to really control his posture and stop him doing what we've just seen him do for, for three rounds every time he successfully completed a takedown. Yeah, very sportsmanlike gesture at the end of that round. Both guys know they've been in a real war. Parisi was single kick, countered with a, a little flurry from Barnes. Here, yeah, Barnes trying to put some of those short shots together, and Parisi will decide, yes, you know what, I need he, to get this back to the floor. He just closed the distance a bit too early. Just as these small errors, when you're fighting against a guy like Norman Parisi with his level of experience, you just got to be so sharp. See, the good thing about Parisi, when he gets in on those shots, he gets back to his feet so quickly. And if he's got his hands around your hips and he's back to his feet, it's a lot of power to really drive through your opponent. And, you know, if you don't stuff it in those first couple of seconds, he's going to put you on his back. Well, three very competitive rounds are in the book. But who is going to be victorious over the three of them put together? The cumulative results. Well, only a few more moments to wait as we are joined by our MC, Joe Martinez. The judges have rendered their decision. It's good to see those two fighters sharing a warm embrace just before I find out who is the victor, and for that, it's over to Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are the judges' scoring totals. Judge Leatherby has it 30-27, and both judges Cartledge and Collette 29-28. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. Norman Parisi! So, Norman Parisi did enough. He won all three rounds on one of the scorecards. Very seasoned performance indeed. A good showing for Leroy Barnes. That was his first of his five, so we'll be seeing much more from both of these fighters.